It's been three weeks since a deadly earthquake rocked China's Sichuan province. The government estimates that some 200,000 people have participated in relief and rescue operations. Among those helping are the Christians of China. George Thomas has this heartwarming story. You know, trying to describe the extent of the devastation here in China is so difficult to put in words. The Chinese government has done a really good job uh, mobilizing its forces to, uh, to help those in need. Well, the Chinese Christians have also gotten involved in their small way. Recently, uh, a group of them gathered together from around the country and headed to some of the devastated regions to help those in need. Dr. Gao Ai Ping, a Christian medical volunteer, is some 900 miles away from her home in Beijing. For the next several weeks, this small village tucked in a corner of China's devastated earthquake zone will be her home away from home. There is not a single Chinese person who has not been touched by the magnitude of this disaster. We are here to help our countrymen in their time of need. We also want them to know that Jesus cares for them. With the permission of local authorities, Ping and a group of Christian doctors from around China started this makeshift medical center to help meet the needs of this hurting community. The people here are poor. They don't have money to travel to the big hospitals in the cities. So we provide them free medical attention. But healing their physical scars is not their only objective. Yesterday we had a mother who sustained a very serious injury and they brought her here. She was so frightened, any tiny sound made her jump. Many kids are also experiencing similar problems. There is a lot of psychological trauma here. We sing to them, we encourage them, we pray with them. In China, where the government's relationship with religion remains strained, these Christian volunteers say they just want to be here to help their nation in this time of need. And by the way, their medical center is called Christian Love Help Station. Our goal is to create an atmosphere that when people live here, they feel cared and loved for. A few miles up the road on a separate mission of mercy, another group of Christian volunteers has just reached the quake zone after completing a tough two-day cross-country journey. What we have gone through to get here is nothing in comparison to what these survivors have experienced. Look around you, look at their lives, their homes. It looks hopeless, but we're here to tell them that there is hope. The team joined a relief group as they distributed water, tents, cooking oil, rice and other supplies to the villages. They also took time to just talk to the victims and pray with them. We are here to be an extension of the Lord's physical and spiritual healing hands. Across this country, Christians, those officially registered with the Chinese government, as well as members of the unregistered house church, are mobilizing to help survivors begin the hard task of rebuilding their lives. They gather daily to pray for the victims of the earthquake. Our hope is that our faith will be a testimony to these hurting people, that they will know there is indeed a God. Today, the believers from this church are out on the streets staying with these refugees, encouraging them, giving them food, clothes, and sharing the love of Jesus with them. The earthquake was a devastating tragedy for China, but the tragedy has become a rallying point as Chinese people from all walks of life, religious and non-religious, band together in an effort to show sympathy, care and love for the millions of earthquake victims. George Thomas, CBN News, Sichuan Province, China. Excellent story, George. Operation Blessing is also working to help the victims of this tragedy. And uh, OB President Bill Horan just got back from China. Welcome back home. Thank you, sir. When did you get here? Uh, night before last, Pat. Yeah. How long were you each over? Two, three days? No, I was over there for about, I think, nine days. Really? Yeah. All right. You lived through Katrina. We were all down in Katrina, but you, you spent a lot of time down there. Contrast Katrina action by the federal government of the United States with the action of the government of China. In, in this earthquake? 180 degrees, black and white. Really? Absolute total contrast, Pat. The, uh, the, the government of China is absolutely amazing and the, the massive uh, operation that they have, and it, they've geared up so quickly. I, I can't imagine how they could do that. And they've thrown hundreds of thousands of troops. I saw troops pl uh, helping villagers plant rice. I mean, yeah. they're helping them. They're in there with machines trying to dig out their personal belongings, like their birth certificates and their bank books yeah. and stuff like that. They really have, have mounted a massive effort. Well, you know, FEMA did nothing in the early days. 
at well, Katrina. Finally, they geared up and started doing something. Well, it isn't because they didn't try. They just, uh, <laughs> they're know such how. a hopeless bureaucracy that uh, I think in China, they don't ask you what you want to do. I think they, tell it's you. more like they tell you what to do. Well, a command economy doesn't hurt, I guess. <laughs> you, you don't have city, state, and federal, all different parties and so forth, all fighting each other. But uh, anyhow, what was the action of the Christians? Uh, yeah, uh, this piece, George Thomas, a lot of Christians are involved. Well, we've seen a lot of Christians involved as uh, volunteers, Pat. Yeah. Um, a number of them have uh, assisted Operation Blessing in our distribution plans up there, and uh, there's a lot of volunteer, a lot of volunteer activity. A uh, small village that Operation Blessing China is working in that that I was uh, part of when I was there uh, is the the folks there are absolutely amazed at. Uh, they can't imagine why uh, there's so much love being demonstrated. I mean, they've actually told me that. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in a meeting with, in a tent with the, the village. We jokingly call him the mayor. I don't think he's really the mayor, but the mm -hmm. village leader and his, uh, his top guys. And uh, they were all expressing to us how amazed they were that uh, we're there helping day after day. We keep coming back and helping them re rebuild their village. And they can't understand why we do how, that. How, we see pictures. Pictures never tell you the full story. How bad was it? The devastation is just absolutely incredible, Pat. It's it's um, the terrain there is so steep in the worst areas that the quake hit mm -hmm. that whole sides of mountains. I talked to a lady that said they had two mountains. Two mountains became one. The river between the two mountains completely disappeared. Uh, it took the soldiers eight hours to hike into that village and uh, then they, they hauled out the, uh, they carried out the very old and the very young on their backs. Mm -hmm. I talked to an 83 year old grandmother who was carried out on the back of a soldier for eight hours. So it's, it's, it's a mess. Well, the need had not gone away. We just don't hear about it as much in the news. Well, the need will certainly be going on for some time, Pat. Mm -hmm. uh, in the village of uh, Yao Jin, where Operation Blessing China has been focused uh, for the last week or so, uh, we've, we, we went and met with the village leaders. I was there and I said, what, you know, what, what do we want to do here first? How about your water? How about your bathroom? Where are you going to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. And uh, we went and bought pipes and fittings and all the plumbing supplies. We bought uh, four and a half tons of sand and all the bag cement and all the hand tools that they needed. And the villagers uh, are it, tremendously energized by this. And it's just amazing the work they're doing now. They've got an, a nice new bathroom built. The water system's all up. There's a place for people to do laundry, a place to wash vegetables. This quickly? That's this quickly. It's amazing. Yeah. I, and I'm amazed at the energy of the people. They just need a little bit of help. It's sort of like priming the pump yeah. or, or providing a spark to light the fire. I again, don't mean to be throwing stones, but New Orleans isn't built up yet. Yeah, that's a, a sad, uh, sad scenario down there. That's for sure, Pat. I mean, that, that infrastructure, the, 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 the sewer pipes and all those, they're all rusty. And decaying. Well, they say that infrastructure down there is some of it's 100 years old, and it was bad before Katrina, let alone after. So yeah. They but sure. these guys are, you having them building latrines in less than a week? Absolutely. I mean, I've got photographs day by day showing the, as soon as we suggested uh, that uh, maybe that ought to be the first thing they'd think about and, and, and just help them lay out where it should be and which way the building should face mm -hmm. according to the prevailing wind and, and told them that we would get the tools and the cement and, and they said, well, we'll recycle the stuff from the wreckage. We'll, we'll get the bricks. We'll get the blocks. And it's just amazing. You know, the uh, ladies with baskets, uh, Mm -hmm. carrying the bricks down there and hauling the dirt away and the men down in the hole digging. Where did you get pipe? Where did you have to go to get? In Chengdu, in Chengdu, the city. It's about a two hour drive. Oh, There's a all... huge market there. I mean, you could oh. buy anything under the sun. So we got the pipe, got it all threaded, got all the fittings and the T's and the elbows and the faucets and all that kind of stuff. And um, we, we, we got all the, all the sledgehammers, 10 sledgehammers and 20 shovels and, and all the- All the, available in Chengdu? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. All you need is, is uh, legal tender. <laughs> a, few, a few dead American presidents on some paper. That helps. <laughs> well, Bill, I just praise the Lord for it. And, and the Chinese people, the government and others who very appreciative. I mean, they... Very supportive. As you know, we've been working with the Chinese Charity Foundation mm -hmm. and also the Chinese uh, Foundation for Poverty Alleviation. Uh, we have uh, joined with the CFPA to fund a school and a dormitory. There was a school uh, up there that was crushed in the earthquake. 900 mm -hmm. kids, 300 were killed. The 600 that survived, they're all 
Uh, they're like the equivalent of uh, freshmen in uh, one of our high schools here mm -hmm. in, in America. They moved them down to near Chengdu, and we've, uh, Operation Blessing has funded a dormitory for them to live in, a school uh, with eight classrooms. It's a building about 24 by 200, and uh, it's already up, Pat. I mean, in one week, it's absolutely incredible how fast mm -hmm. things are moving. Um, you still need money. Operation Blessing still needs money. Absolutely. Okay. The, the more the more money that we get, the more good we can do over there, and we we're getting leverage. We're get, we're doing some real good work with it. Well, folks, there's the uh, address on the screen: Operation Blessing Disaster Fund, one eight hundred seven five nine zero seven hundred. You couldn't ask for a better opportunity to help people who are helping themselves. That's what's so nice. They're doing everything they can to help themselves and. Uh, we want to stand with them and help them. And what a testimony for the Lord. It's great, Bill. It's fantastic. Congratulations. Appreciate you. God bless you, man. Thank you, Pat. Bill Horan, head of Operation Blessing.